again from the Buff Bistro, and today's a snow day, so I'm watching one of my friend's kids, her son and daughter. Now, my girls are home with me all the time because I do homeschool and I cook all the time, and so they're used to everything I make, but I'm not real sure what my friend's kids are going to like, so I'm going to go with something classic. I'm going to make a chicken pot pie, and I'm going to show you how. It's way easier than you may think. So I started off with one and a half chicken breast, and I just went ahead and sauteed that right up in this pan. You can see it there, it's nice and brown and cooked. I like to use chicken breast when I'm feeding kids because I know that's what, that's what they prefer, unless it's gonna be fried, and then they always love the legs. I'm not sure how that works, but that's the way it is. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, I'm gonna turn my oven on to about a medium high for right now, just to get the heat going. And I'm gonna take, I have a cup of carrots, um, roughly chopped, they don't have to be beautiful unless you're serving a real nice you know a nice group of people not that my friends kids aren't a nice group of people they don't have to look beautiful just get them rough chopped that way they they end up on the fork or they end up on the spoon and they're not huge pieces but they're not so small that they just disintegrate um, I have celery I'm gonna wait on that and then I've got half a cup of chopped red onions sometimes I like to use yellow onions but today I thought I'd go with red because they're a little bit sweeter and they'll bring out a little bit of sweetness to the chicken and so I'm going to crank this up a little bit more and you're just going to bring that to a nice saute and start browning start browning those onions. Um, your carrots can get a good sear on them. It's going to taste really good because they start to caramelize just a little bit. And I would way rather have the natural juices from the carrots that create a little bit of sweetness and the onion rather than adding sugar to the recipe. That's going to save you in the, the kind of carbs that you're going to have. Um, you can have those fast burning carbs that like a fruit, those kinds of things, or you can have slow burning carbs. It just depends on what you're wanting for your day. Today I'm happy with having these fruit car or these veggie carbs um, come out while I cook. There we go. I'm going to crank it up so it goes a little bit faster. Just make sure you keep an eye on it and it doesn't get too, too hot too fast. So I'm going to be right back in some water. Okay. This would be nice to have a commercial break now and then. It's okay. So I'm sauteing. You can start here and it sizzle. I'm going to saute up some of these veggies. I'm going to make sure my onions get pulled apart. When you're feeding kids, if they're picky, they're going to notice the strange things. If you cook the onions really well, they'll never know they're in there. But if they stay clumped up together, someone's going to end up with a bite of onion. And then you know it's going to be that, I don't like it. And so you got to fight that with just a little bit of thought. Get those onions chopped up nice and small. And make sure they separate from each other in their layers. Pretty easy. Okay. Smells really good. Now I haven't seasoned anything yet, and with chicken pot pie, I really love to just do classic salt and pepper and garlic. So I'm just gonna kind of salt over top. Um, I don't like to use too much salt because everybody is different in what they like to have salty wise. So I'd rather people add salt on there um, at the table rather than adding salt here in the recipe. Because some people may be watching their sodium and they may not want a lot of salt, and some people they like a lot of salt, so they can do what they want. And this is one of my favorite techniques. I know I should probably mince my own garlic, but in a pinch, when you're a, when you're a busy mom or you're a busy student or you're a busy anything, professional person, dad, whatever, um, time is money. And I like fresh minced garlic just as much as the next person, but this is so handy, and it's just one, two little dabs in there and I can never have enough garlic. And I do know that these kiddos like garlic because I know their mom cooks with a lot of garlic. <coughs> Ooh, there's the onions. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that sauteed up. And I can see them starting kind of brown and I don't want them to stick. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit of water right inside there. And that's just gonna pull all those juices right out of those veggies. And that is looking really pretty. So, just like with other recipes, you know what people like and what they don't like. My youngest doesn't care for peas. I think she got that from her father. So, I'm not adding peas, but I am going to add some celery. That was a cup of celery. And I'm going to do a cup of frozen green beans. I don't always use frozen, but I have them on hand because we were doing meal prep a while back and it was the boring same old chicken, rice, and green beans. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add those in there. 
I'm going to let that celery and those green beans heat up. You don't want that celery to get too mushy or it's just terrible when it comes out of the oven. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, here is a super duper trick. I don't know if you have this. If you don't, you should get some of this. This is the Nor Caldo con Sabor de Pollo. It is usually found in the like Hispanic section of the ref of the grocery store where you would get your salsas and your um, refried beans and things like that. It is fantastic. It is just a, um, a chicken stock, a base. And I have three tablespoons here and I'm gonna sprinkle it over top. It's got other seasonings and it is the perfect chicken noodle soup enhancer. It is the perfect chicken pot pie. It's so good when you make gravy with it. It has got the most wonderful flavors and I just love it. So grab a big thing of that. You might as well get the big one because if you cook a lot, you're gonna use it all the time. Anytime you use chicken, I use it. And I'm gonna let those, those flavors kind of sink into some of these veggies before I add the water. See, and it's starting to stick just a little bit on the bottom, so pour a little bit of water in there to keep it from sticking, because you, you want that water to pull those juices out. You don't want all those good, yummy flavors to end up stuck on the bottom of the pan. There you go. And I'm too short. Ta da! <laughs> Cornstarch. This is my magic bullet recipe for um, thickening sauces without flour. I don't do well with gluten. Um, I've had some stomach issues in the past, and I just, gluten doesn't sit very well with me. So when I make gravy now, I use. Um, a cornstarch mixture, which it's way healthier for you if you don't care for gluten, and I just don't. So there you have it. So, ta-da! That is looking really good. And I'm going to go ahead and pour in this rest of this cup of water. And I'm going to crank it all the way up to high so it can start to make that broth. And if you can see it, see how good that looks in there? Awesome. So I'm going to bring it back down, let that simmer, and I'm going to go make a little cornstarch slurry. So what that is, is you're going to take your bowl, somewhere where you can whisk it, you want to be able to whisk. And you're just going to measure in about two tablespoons of cornstarch. Um, just like that. Let that simmer. I'm going to grab some hot water to put in here and we're going to make it thick and then we're going to pour it into our pan, cover it, pop it in the oven. Okay, so I've got my cornstarch and my water mixture and you want to mix it up really well. If you don't mix it, it's going to leave clumps in your in your gravy. So get it nice and mixed. You can see it's just kind of a slurry. It's not thin, it's not thick, it's just kind of in between. Um, and that cornstarch, as it heats up, it's going to bind everything together and make a really yummy gravy. Now, before adding your cornstarch, see I've got a nice good rolling boil there. Um, you kind of want a boil that you can't stir down for this part, but before you burn yourself, I'll be good. I use a tasting spoon. Um, taste your sauce. Taste everything as you cook it. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> taste your sauce. Taste everything while you cook. If you don't taste thing as you go, you're never going to know exactly what it's going to be. So now take your little cornstarch slurry and you're just going to pour it right over top. Just like that. And you're going to crank it up. And you can already see it start to get thick. Now, if it's not getting thick enough, you can just go ahead and add some more cornstarch and water mixture. Just make another pot of it and go from there. If it's too thick, add a little more water. What I love about making chicken pot pie is I always um, underestimate the amount it's going to make and I end up with way extra. And so 
I will have enough chicken pot pies probably to make two out of this recipe, which is pretty awesome. Although I'm only going to make one today. So nice and stirred. I'm going to bring it up here so you can see kind of the thickness. See how it's just kind of thick, kind of like it looks like when you go to a, a Chinese restaurant and it's got, um, you get a thick brown sauce. It's about that consistency. So you're going to stir it up, make sure all that cornstarch is mixed up in there. I'm going to turn off the heat. And I pull it off the heat. You don't want that cornstarch to burn on the bottom. Now, here is a simple, healthy hack. When you make a full-size chicken pot pie, you're going to serve it in a dish. So you don't really need the, um, the double crust. Uh, hey, guys. Y'all have been downstairs for 11 minutes. What? Can we get a little more time? Or do you want to come say hi to my camera? No, I'm just hungry. It's almost ready. No. It is. I'm You're not super gonna, hungry. Not gonna have dinner here. Huh? Not gonna have dinner here. Maybe. Well, your mom will be back. So, I'm just gonna pour it right in. Um, can I plug this? It's fine. You can plug it into my, you can use the selfie stick later. Where's this? I'm gonna plug it. Okay. Where are the that was Dane, my friend's little boy. He's pretty cute. This is Jew. She's over here. She's being shy. So there we go. I'm not doing a double crust. I'm just doing a single crust because we don't need all those extra carbs. This is my little one, Ilsa. Say hi. 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 Okay, and I already have my crust rolled out and formed just a little bigger than the pie is. And I'm just going to pinch it around it. Make sure you go over the edge. Oops, you can't see me do that. Make sure you go over the edge because your crust will shrink in the oven. Um and you want it to have something to hold on to so it doesn't fall off of your pie. And you go all the way around. If you go too far over the edge though, it'll drip off onto the floor of your oven and it will burn and it will smoke like crazy. That's also something you don't want to do. So I just pinch it all the way around. Um, when you're cutting out your dough, after you've rolled out your dough, I just flip my pan or my dish upside down and I just cut around it so I know it's gonna fit over top and leave me a nice pretty crust right there. So here's an important part. Go ahead with your pie and take and poke a few holes. Do you wanna have some air holes in your chicken pot pie? So it won't poof up and explode all over. There we go. Oven is set at 350. It's gonna go in until it's a nice golden brown on top, which is about 20 minutes or so. There you have it, super easy chicken pot pie. Now I think I'll speak as I'm